What's up guys, my name is Brandon and today we're going to be talking all about iOS 12.2 and iOS 12.1.4. So both of these are recent releases from Apple and we're going to talk about the battery life, the performance, you know, the new features and changes, all that good stuff. And basically I'm going to tell you guys why I think iOS 12.2 is just a much better software than iOS 12.1.4. So yeah, let's talk about 12.2 beta 2 first here and let's talk about some of the new changes and features in 12.2 beta 2 as well. Now I covered a lot of the changes and features in my first original video on iOS 12.2 beta 2, but there were some more features and bugs and just changes overall that were discovered after using the software for about a week now. So one of the first things I mentioned shortly after shooting the original video is that if we go into our control center here and we take a look up here in the control center platter for the music, you can see there's an icon up there for the top right. Now that icon is actually dynamic and it changes based on what type of media you are listening to. So right now we have a song, so you can see that icon right right there. Now, if we go into a video, let's just say we go to a stream here on Twitch. Let me just turn it down. You can actually see that the icon in the control center now changes. So you can also 3D touch on that and you can see the icon changes there when it's playing music versus when it's playing video. And once again, you can see here's what it looks like when playing music. So I personally think that they should be swapped around. I feel like this would be more appropriate for video and the one for video would look better for audio, but this is a change here in 12.2. Now, another change I noticed here in iOS 12.2 beta 2 is that we now get this message at the bottom of messages that shows messages in iCloud is currently disabled and then it says repair account. So I have not seen this before. Now I don't currently have messages in iCloud enabled, at least not on this device, but that's a brand new pop-up that I have not seen before down there in the bottom. So pretty interesting that it just always stays there until I guess you repair the account or enable messages in iCloud. Another change in iOS 12.2 actually only happened to AT&T customers. So some AT&T customers actually saw a 5GE in the status bar and Instead of just showing LTE or AT&T like it normally does. Now this is not real 5G. Obviously, no phone can you know have 5G at this moment but it's AT&T's kind of misleading name for an upgraded version of 4G LTE. And the E stands for evolution. So it's 5G evolution. Uh, basically, that's the indicator that people saw in their status bar, even though it hasn't really fully been rolled out to all of the US just yet. And you can see here that AT&T actually did provide a statement for this because they were facing kind of a lot of backlash about this. You can see they said, today, some iPhone and iPad users could start seeing our 5G evolution indicator on their devices. The indicator simply helps customers know when they are in an area where 5G evolution experience may be available. So even after reading that, it's still very, very misleading. So very sketchy stuff from AT&T there, but a lot of people did notice that on AT&T. So that's new here in 12.2. Now, another thing I want to discuss is something that I did talk about in the original video, and that is that the battery percentage now shows up on the lock screen underneath the time instead of the date now, and it's permanently there. Now before that would only show up when you are charging your device or when it's hooked up to a charger, but now it always shows your battery percentage right there underneath the time. And even though in the original video, I said that I think it's a good idea to have that there, I've kind of changed my mind because there's been more multiple times when I went to pick up my phone to check the date and the date is just nowhere to be found. So I definitely think that this is a bug. A lot of people have complained. Some people like it. Some people don't. I guess people that don't really, you know, have work or anything or don't really care about the date will like it but I do always check for the date right there. So it's kind of annoying that I can't see that. I think they should implement the date and then the maybe in smaller text, the charge percentage below the date there. So we'll see if that gets fixed in beta three, but I'm guessing it will before the final version of 12.2 gets released. Another thing that I said in my initial 12.2 beta two video is that the group FaceTime bug may be fixed or it may not be. I didn't really know at the time, but now of course I can confirm that it has not been fixed here in 12.2 beta two. I have tried it and also 12.1.4 came out after iOS 12.2 and we're going to talk about 12.1.4 here in a second but uh, basically since this update came out after 12.2 beta 2 obviously the, the fix wasn't fully implemented just yet so 12.2 beta 3 will probably have the fix in it and of course when 12.2 the final version comes out it will also have the FaceTime bug fix in it but for the time being in beta 2 group FaceTime still does not work and then finally the last thing I noticed that's been changed here in 12.2 beta 2 is the airplay icon is now the new icon in the share sheet when you go into photos or anywhere where airplay will show up in the share sheet you can see that the new icon is also reflected down here so yeah those are some of the new changes and features found in 12.2 beta 2 some additional new 
features and changes found in 12.2 beta 2. Now let's discuss the Wi-Fi connectivity, the performance, the battery life, all that good stuff, all that important stuff that you guys really do care about. So first of all, the Wi-Fi connectivity on 12.2 beta 2 was actually going really good. It actually was getting a lot better, but one night it would just not connect to my Wi-Fi at all. And I actually took a video of when this happened. So let me go ahead and find this real quick. So take a look at this. So this is on 12.2 beta two, and you can see it tries to connect to my 2.4 gigahertz band of the Wi-Fi first, and it does not connect. And then it basically shows no Wi-Fi at all. So I have to turn Wi-Fi off, turn it back on. And keep in mind, by the way, guys, when I'm running this test, I have my iPhone 10R and also my iPhone 8 Plus both connected to the Wi-Fi, both actually, you know, browsing the web, perfectly fine, connected to the Wi-Fi on 12.1.4. So this is definitely has to do with either 12.2 beta 2 or just a hardware defect in the iPhone 10s Max. I still don't know. I still think it's software. So this seems to be a bug here in 12.2 beta 2. You can see there. It tried to connect then went away and really it just never connected the only time it actually fixed itself is when i had to reset the router and when i reset the router and turn off the wi-fi and turn it back on then it actually worked so really annoying here in 12.2 beta 2 but i can say that the wi-fi strength in general does seem to be better on 12.2 versus 12.1.3 and 12.1.4 and it doesn't drop every single day like it did in 12.1.3 and 12.1.4. So I guess that is a good sign that it doesn't disconnect as much as previous versions, but that was a really annoying bug when it could not connect to my router for a while there. Now, as far as the performance goes on 12.2, this is also better than 12.1.3 and 12.1.4, and it's actually noticeable just when it comes to multitasking, when it comes to the gestures, just how fluid everything feels. Everything just feels so much more fluid and faster here on 12.2. Now, don't expect like a huge performance boost or anything like that it's very minor even to me and you know to you you're probably not even going to really notice a difference from 12.1.4 to 12.2 uh, and keep in mind, we are still in beta stages when the final version gets released, you could notice a bigger difference. But for now, it's very minimal, but to me, it is noticeable. And then when it comes to battery life, battery life is also better on 12.2 beta 2 compared to 12.1.4. And this is something that I was actually pretty surprised about. You can see my screen on and screen off time. It's actually much better than I was getting on 12.1.3 and 12.1.4. Now, of course, I did have much more time with 12.1.3, but 12.1.4, the battery life on 12.1.4, is literally the same as 12.1.3. Nowadays, I'm going to bed with about 20 to 25% of battery life left instead of like 10 to 15% or less on 12.1.3 and 12.1.4. So yeah, that is a really good sign and it's probably only going to get better with future betas. And of course, when the final version of 12.2 gets released, it's probably also going to have better battery life than the betas, which already have better battery life than 12.1.3 and 12.1.4. Now, as for when we can expect the next beta of 12.2, 12.2 beta 3 is probably gonna come out either later this week or early next week. So just stay tuned to the channel. Of course, make sure you do have the notifications turned on for my channel so you don't miss any of these new iOS update videos of course you guys know i like to bring you these follow-up videos as well to let you know how the software has been running for me personally so now let me just briefly talk about ios 12.1.4 which is here on my iphone 10r and you guys know that the big reason that ios 12.1.4 was released was to fix the facetime the group facetime bug that of course i did make a video on as a big breach of privacy so apple did need to fix that but iOS 12.1.4 doesn't really fix anything else besides just some backend security uh, vulnerabilities. You're not really going to notice a big difference going from 12.1.3 to 12.1.4. Some people have reported that the battery life is a little bit better and the performance is a little bit better, but I think that is 100% placebo because I do not feel any difference in 12.1.3 versus 12.1.4, even when I'm using it on the same device here. But like I mentioned earlier, the performance and the battery life is literally the same as 12.1.3, also as expected, and of course 12. 12.2 beta 2 has better performance and battery life than 12.1.4. So if you are on 12.1.4, I don't think it would be a bad decision to go ahead and sign up for the beta program and get on the beta of iOS 12.2 right now. Because nowadays the betas are actually very stable. They didn't used to be, especially in the iOS 11 days and the early iOS 12 days. But nowadays the betas are actually pretty stable and I'm running it on my daily driver without any issue. Now, of course, if you do decide to install the beta profile on your daily driver and use a beta, you know, every single day, just know that it does come with some risk. You know, you may have some apps crashing and you know, things like that, but I have not experienced any of that. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much it. I just wanted to give you guys a follow-up update on how these two softwares have been performing for me. Of course, my daily driver here, the 10S Max is running 12.2 beta 2. I'll be running through all the betas on that. 
and then 12.1.4 here on the iPhone 10R. I will be updating to beta 3 of 12.2 when that does get released because I think it's a much better build than 12.1.4. But yeah, I'm really curious to know your guys' experience with these softwares as well. So let me know down in the comment below how they have been treating you. Also, if you guys did enjoy the video, I would really appreciate it if you hit that thumbs up button. And of course, stay tuned for the next video by hitting that subscribe button and make sure those notifications are turned on. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.